Hello learners, today's discussion is on descriptive survey method in educational research. In educational research that is from the course MES016 that you have studied in your MA education program first year, you must have gone through different sections, different blocks, different units relating to different aspects of educational research. And uh, definitely you must have studied about different methods of educational research, just like how to conduct a historical research in education, how to conduct a philosophical research, particularly in education discipline, how to conduct a survey types of research, or particularly if I will say that is descript descriptive survey research in education discipline, and further how to conduct an experiment or experimental research in education discipline. Uh, the theoretical construct, the theoretical knowledge, I hope that you must have studied from MES 016 educational research course. And further in the second year of your program, you have a course that is MESP 001, course title is dissertation. And uh, dissertation is the practical oriented course, that is the project course. The theoretical construct, the knowledge and understanding that you have gathered, that you have received from educational research theoretical course for that in the second year you are supposed to practically use it. By using those concepts you are supposed to conduct a study, you are supposed to write a report. In the course of these studies, one of the research method that today we are going to discuss that is descriptive survey method in educational research. So how descriptive survey method you will be using in your research and uh, I can say that uh, if I will go through uh, the research proposal that you are submitting and the dissertation report that you are submitting. Uh, I find that uh, most of the students they conduct their study or they do a type of survey research and very few students they turn out they come forward with conducting study by using other, me other methods just like it may be a historical method or it may be a type of philosophical research or it may be by conducting a rigorous experiment or that you can say experimental research. But most of the students uh, they focus upon or they design their study uh, by conducting a descriptive by using a descriptive survey method. So friends in this session we will be discussing that what are the different things you supposed to keep in your mind when you select or when uh, you are using descriptive survey method for conducting your dissertation work in MA education uh, in MA education program. Now let me to go forward. I have already uh, explained that what are the different methods uh, as a student of education you are supposed to use in your research work in your dissertation work. Mostly four types of methods we use. That is philosophical method or we can say philosophical research. Then historical method that is the historical research. Then descriptive method or descriptive research. And the fourth one is the experimental method or the experimental research. In philosophical research what we do, we try to understand the vision, we try to understand the ideas just like Gandhiji's views on education or in the contemporary society or you can say at the present time and I can say that uh, the current document or the current education policy is in our hand that is NEP 2020, National Education Policy 2020. If I will say that uh, whether Gandhiji's vision on education, Gandhiji's ideas on education, whether this has been reflected in NEP 2020 or not, to conduct such type of study definitely um, uh, uh, you should go through uh, you know, the literature, the primary literature that has been uh, developed by Gandhiji or which is available that reflect upon Gandhiji's educational thought uh, or Gandhiji, Gandhiji's concept on education and further you have to analyze the NEP document National Education Policy 2020 and you have to just analyze it what are the different concepts that at the present time that has been reflected uh, uh, um, here in NEP about the Gandhiji's uh, 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 you can say the vision on education. And further to talk about the historical research, I can say that the things that has been conducted earlier, so there is the need many a time we analyze uh, you know, the things which is available or that has been conducted earlier. 
okay, because that will further provide you or provide a shape for designing our present and for practicing or shaping our uh, you can say uh, present time or to shaping our present education system. So, that is why if I will tell about the reports of different education commissions, uh, committees and commissions, I can take the example of the University Education Commission 1948-49. Then second, uh, uh, that is your secondary education commission that is also called as the Mudalyar Commission 1952-53. Then the education commission 64-66 that is called as the Kothari Education Commission. Then further the education commission or the national, uh, national education commission 1968. Then further NPE 1986, National Police and Education 1986. So, these are the history now. At a time, uh, these commissions uh, had been established and uh, the commission has submitted their report and according to, to that report, the then education system that has been shaped, okay, so that has been implemented. Many findings have been implemented and you can say that uh, uh, many findings that has not been implemented yet also. And at the recent time, we have uh, NEP 2020 that has been notified uh, uh, in 2020, 2020, okay, national education policy. In historical research, what we do, the things that has been conducted earlier, we can also analyze those documents and find out the chronology to find out the development, how the school has, uh, school education has been developed uh, in India and further how the teacher education has been developed in India, how it has emerged and further how this has been this has been developed and it has taken its current shape that means what you are using today, the teacher education practices or the curriculum or different the structure of the teacher education that we are using today and uh, different stages of education and you can say uh, the structure of education. Uh, for proper analysis it, what we will be doing, we can conduct a type of developmental study, we can conduct a type of historical study. And in a historical study, both qualitative and quantitative data, this uh, uh, within the scope of historical study, you will be getting two types of data. Accordingly, in philosophical study also, you will be getting two types of data, both qualitative data as well as quantitative data. So, to know the developmental characteristics, to know the chronology, we conduct a historical study to know the vision, to know the ideas and uh, to know the contemporary use of a certain aspect, certain vision of any educationist, any thinker, you can conduct a type of philosophical study. And further, the third is the descriptive research. Descriptive research is the most important research here, what you are doing as a researcher, you are just studying the present status, the current status of a research problem. That means you have to go to the field and you will involve yourself, you will engage yourself interacting with the subjects, with the sample, with the population. It may be the teachers, it may be the students, it may be the community members, may be the parents. Okay? And by interacting themselves, you will get certain data and you will find out uh, the status of the problem and, and, and by analyzing those data, you have to reach at the present uh, practices. So, that is why when I talk about a descriptive survey, it means it focuses upon to understand the present status or the current status, the current practices of a research problem, current practices of an issue, of a theme, of a research problem. And here in a descriptive survey method, further we will be discussing with detail, in a descriptive survey method, uh, there is the scope to get two types of data. One is the qualitative data and other is the quantitative data. And if you ask me whether uh, which type of data, the scope of getting which type of data is more here, I can say that the scope of getting qualitative data and quantitative data are more or less equal. And many a time you can conduct a pure qualitative study also and you can conduct a pure quantitative study and many a time you can conduct a mixed method types of study. That means you can just include both quantitative aspect that is called as the positivist paradigm and the second one is the qualitative uh, structure or the qualitative aspect that is called as the non-positivist paradigm or that is called as the humanistic paradigm. So, two types of things you can do. That means by conducting certain tests, you can just get certain score, certain number 
for analyzing it quantitatively in your study. And in a descriptive survey method, you can also observe the situation or observe the person, observe certain uh, you can say events which, which is happening. And from there, you can also record certain information, certain data and further you will be using those data for conducting your study qualitatively. Further, in qualitative research particularly that is come under uh, the descriptive survey method, you can take the interview, you can take the interview of different clientele group. It may be parents, teachers, principals, experts, education experts, subject experts, then uh, parents, then local government, right. So, you can establish a type of interaction with them and you can collect data qualitatively and you can conduct your study. And further, you can also do a type of focus group discussion, right. So, within a group, you can just take an issue that may be one of the aspect of your research problem and you can establish a type of focus group discussion that what students, what is the context of the students to understand a particular aspect and what is the context and perspective uh, uh, of the teachers to understand certain aspect. Let the, uh, there is the classroom situation. In a classroom situation, how the students conceive that classroom situation and how a teacher conceive that classroom situation. Then what is the gap between these two? The form or uh, you can say uh, when the teachers are teaching to the students, uh, whether the aims objectives, whether the instructional objectives or the learning outcomes that has been taken, that has been fixed by the teacher, whether it has reached at the students uh, properly or not, whether the students are achieving those learning outcomes or not. To understand all such things, you can also conduct a type of focus group discussion. You can observe the class and at the same time, you can also do the focus group discussion. That means what the students really want and uh, what the teachers do in the classroom and what type of things the teachers supposed to do. To know all such things, you can also make a group of teachers, students, uh, parents even, uh, 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 you as a researcher, you can establish, you can conduct a type of focus group discussion. And the fourth one is the experimental study, right. In experimental study, mostly it is quantitative in nature, you will get uh, data which is in terms of numbers, okay. You will get uh, the data in terms of numbers that means you will get certain score and further you will be analyzing those scores by using certain statistical techniques, okay. It may be a, uh, uh, you can say a parametric statistics or it may be a non-parametric statistics by using uh, you know, the uh, simple statistics you can say measures, measures of central tendency, measures of variability, correlation statistics and even if the t-test significance difference between two means to understand uh, whether there are any significance difference between two means you can employ here a t-test and further if it is a non-parametric statistics you can also use chi-square and other types of statistics. So, here what I mean to say in an experimental study you have to involve yourself in a rigorous experiment. You have to take two groups. One is the experimental and other is the control group. And, and you have to do an experiment in a controlled situation. And further, you have to compare the result of the two groups, the experimental group as well as the control group. Okay? And you have to compare the two results to know whether there are any difference between the set of two scores or not. And we conduct the experimental study to know the present status and further to know the effectiveness, to know the impact of certain things uh, on, uh, 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 on teachers behavior, on students behavior, what we do in, uh, in the teaching learning process and further in future whether uh, a particular method, whether a particular technique, whether a particular technology will help the students to achieve better or not. So, we do a type of experimental study also which is purely quantitative in nature and which is based upon purely uh, a positivist paradigm. So, friends in education all these four types of research method we use in our study. Now, let me to focus upon very briefly what is the very concept of a descriptive study or a descriptive research or descriptive when we use the descriptive survey method. I have already said that descriptive research we conduct to know the existing problem, to know the current uh, situation, the current status of the research problem. So, we the very concept of a descriptive research is to study the present and existing status of the problem or the phenomenon 
and uh, it also helps our descriptive studies are restricted not only to fact finding but many often result in the formulation of important principles of knowledge and solutions of significant problems concerning to local, state, national and international issues. Then further descriptive surveys investigate phenomenon in their natural setting and their purpose is both immediate and long term. So friends, the findings that you will get by using the descriptive survey method, first of all you will understand the current status, the current status of a research problem and further descriptive research also futuristic. That means the findings of the research will also help you uh, to solve problems immediately and at the same time long term. Many a time under descriptive survey, we also conduct a type of applied research. We also conduct a type of, if it is particularly in school context, if it is particularly in the context of teaching and learning, that we do in the school, right? Uh, the academic behavior of the teachers or the problem faced by the students. We conduct, we also conduct a type of action research. So friends, it may be applied research. That means immediately you have to apply the result of that research upon that group on which you conducted the study and you want that immediate uh, after conducting the study you have to implement the findings, you have to implement the result and you will observe that yes certain changes, certain behavioral changes are happening. So for observing it you, you can do a type of applied research and you can also do a type of action research. So friends the very concept of a descriptive research is to understand the present phenomena, the present status and the objective is also futuristic. You can also use it in a long term as well as short term basis. Now let us focus upon that what are the different basis that you will be using or what are the different types of descriptive survey studies and the types are based upon certain basis. Just like on the basis of coverage of population and units of respondents, you can conduct two types of descriptive study that is census survey and sample survey. We will be discussing the concept of a census survey and sample survey. Then on the basis of time of events or stages of events studied, that may be of two types that is longitudinal survey and cross-sectional survey. Then further on the basis of nature of data and methods involved, this is documentary survey research. And further on the basis of purpose of the study, it may be a status survey or a comparative survey or it may be an evaluation survey or evaluation, evaluative research that we say. So friends, these are the certain specific survey studies that we do under this survey research, under this survey method. Now very briefly, let me to go through that what we do in census survey as well as in sample survey. So friends, in census survey, that means when I talk about the census, I am using the very term that is census. Census means a large population or uh, the census that in Indian context, the census that we do in every 10 years. You might be uh, acquainted with the terms that in our country in every 10 years, we do a census survey. So here we touch upon each and every household of our country and we, we try to collect the surface data about the household, about their economic status, about their education status, about the members of the family, about the population and about the resources that you are using, the physical resources that they are using. So that is why census survey means gathering pertinent information about all the units of the population that is it may be people, institutions, householders, etc. Population may be consist of here persons, institutions, objects, attributes, qualities, families, everything it is included here. As example, I have just explained here census survey of India which takes place once in every 10 years that gathers benchmark data about each and every household of India, of our country. Since it concentrates on each and every household, it restricts its scope to certain surface level demographic data like age, sex, that is gender, income, education, lands possessed, cattle, nature of house, domestic facilities available, etc. So in a census survey, what you will be doing, you will be including all the unit of the population. 
you cannot do there is no scope to do a sampling here okay so each and every unit of the population you will be touching upon to collect data and further the second type of survey that is called as the sample survey in sample survey it means gathering relevant information about a smaller representation of the population under study population may consist of persons institutions objects attributes qualities families etc data gathered through sample survey are generalized to the population of the study for example study of a sample of schools drawn from a particular district towards implementation of right to education act 2009 can be generalized as implementation status of all the schools of that district so friends many a time because of paucity of time it is not possible to touch upon or to collect data from every unit of the population so that, that's why what you are doing you are just selecting a group from the population and uh, 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 that group will further represent the population and you are conducting your study upon that group let size of the population is 1000 what you are doing you are taking let 10 percent of the population that means 100 out of 1000 and you are conducting the study upon 100 sample and the result that you are getting you are generalizing that result upon the entire population upon the 1000 population so in this way in education you can also conduct your study you can also conduct a sample study in your uh, in your research in dissertation then the next method in terms of time taken many a time we conduct study uh, that takes uh, much time it may be a decade it may be more than that time also and many a time we conduct study at the same time so that's why there are two types of methods you can select here one is called as the cross-sectional research and other is called as the longitudinal research. In cross-sectional research it is conducted at one point of time whereas a longitudinal study is conducted at different points of time. Uh, in cross-sectional data collected from different segments of the population and in a longitudinal study data collected from the same population. Cross-sectional it takes less time to conduct a study but a longitudinal it takes much time. So friends if I will give one example in a longitudinal study let you select a group of students at class 1 and you want to know the effect of mid, uh, midday meal upon that group of students in a long term whether that keeping certain effect upon their achievement their physical health also their growth also. So what you will be doing? just you collect data and go through their physical parameter their educational parameter at class 1 and further take data upon the same group in class second class then third class up to completion of the school education then chronologically you can find out the improvement of uh, of uh, that group of students in different aspect physically educationally mentally okay so that can be conducted long, longitudinally because it takes much time and many a time without taking much time at the same time you want to conduct study. So what you can do? You can just include many sections in a same class even if a same standard in different schools but the data that you, uh, you will collect you will collect at the same time. Let today you are collecting data. So what you will be doing? You can collect data from five different schools at the same time. So in that way you can include the cross-sectional study. In cross-sectional study you can include more than one variable also and more than one clientele groups also. Then further you can also conduct a type of documentary survey. In documentary survey we analyze present events from available records and it is a type of content analysis. So what you will be doing the documents which is available you can just analyze those content and by analyzing those content you can come forward with certain findings that uh, what is there in the content. And two things which is very important here in a documentary survey that is called as external validity for authenticating the sources and internal validity for authenticating the content. That means the content which is included in the uh, document whether that content is authentic or not and further the sources that has been used for developing that document whether that so, uh, the sources are authentic or not. So these are the important things that you supposed to consider when you analyze a document. So friends uh, these are the uh, certain important methods uh, that come under the survey method, descriptive survey method that you will be using uh, for conducting your study, for conducting your MA education dissertation work. You can also many a time you can do a type of comparative study, 
you can also do a type of correlational study. So, here you will be using the statistics of correlation to know whether two variables are uh, uh, you know positively correlated with or not. Okay. And you can also find out the difference between two, uh, two groups in a particular variable. If I will say that whether there are any difference between the achievement of boys and the achievements of girls particularly in the variable of achievement or in their intelligence, in their aptitude. So, in such case you can also conduct a descriptive survey method. So, learners today we discussed uh, you know uh, different uh, uh, techniques, different methods that you supposed to use under the broad method that is a descriptive survey research and uh, in our next session on any other day we will be discussing on uh, many other pertinent topics on your educational research. Thank you.